sorry. Okay. <laughs> Wrong word. <laughs> Three, two, one. Is climate change. Why do you think like people should really take it seriously? Well, I think it's totally real. The first indications came decades ago and then slowly slowly it has become better known and now I think one can already see the effects that weather patterns become unpredictable. This is supposed to be the dry season in Indonesia now but it's raining all the time. <laughs> And in Germany, we suddenly have super hot summers, which was really, really rare, and now it's happening every year. How real the climate change is. It is really something that we should look at as a existential challenge of our time. And that is something that I would like you to remember when we leave this room. What I mean with existential, uh, existen existential challenge is that it's about life and death, actually. Uh, kalau menurut saya ini masalah yang terpenting. Malah orang bilang ini biang dari segala masalah. Ya. Jadi kita lihat sekarang bangsa Indonesia atau segala bangsa dunia ini menghadapi masalah kemiskinan, pekerjaan, kesehatan, infrastruktur, teknologi, pendidikan, semuanya banyak masalah. Nah dari semua masalah ini, masalah yang paling penting ya, uh, adalah masalah perubahan iklim. Karena uh, perubahan iklim ini menentukan semua sektor yang ada dalam kehidupan kita. When did climate change start? Throughout history, the temperature has been changing. But the current changing in temperature we see now is very rapid. It happens very quickly. Uh, with the speeding rate we see in temperature changing right now, it is a real threat to our planet. I think it's difficult to say theoretically when it starts, but most scientists who do evaluate the data available say that there is a significant change from industrialization. So about one or two centuries ago when the steam engine and motor vehicles became available on a big scale and started to emit carbon dioxide and other gases in, in bigger and bigger quantities. Jadi Pak, bagaimana ya kita bisa menghentikan perubahan iklim ini? Sekarang uh, temperatur dunia udah naik 1,1 derajat Celcius ya dibanding uh, pertengahan abad ke-19 dan suhu ini akan naik terus nih hmm. bisa naik sampai bahkan orang bilang 3 atau 4 derajat Celcius nah uh, yang diinginkan oleh PBB uh, diinginkan oleh bangsa-bangsa dunia apa yang dinamakan perjanjian Paris hmm. ya tahun 2015 uh, kita semua harus berusaha agar suhu bumi itu naiknya cukup satu setengah derajat Celcius saja why 1.5 degrees? Why is that number so important for us? Scientists have for a very long time studied the climate and have come to the conclusion that 1.5 degrees is increase of temperature on the globe is as much as we can take. If we go Higher than that, when it comes to our temperature, we will see even more devastating effects of climate change. Uh, effects of climate change in, in the higher temperature than 1.5. The scientists are really worried about tipping points where things go completely out of control and where any damage may become irreversible if we go a lot beyond the 1.5 degree. And that's why uh, they recommend very much to keep strictly to that one. Uh, jadi Pak, bagaimana kita bisa menjaga agar kenaikan suhu bumi tidak lebih dari 1,5 derajat Celcius? Kita harus melakukan apa yang dinamakan dekarbonisasi. Jadi mengurangi karbon uh, dari segala kegiatan yang kita lakukan. Hmm. Karena selama ini segala kegiatan ekonomi, kegiatan umat manusia itu menimbulkan karbon. Ya kan? Dan karbon hmm. ini yang mengakibatkan uh, gas rumah kaca dan kenaikan uh, suhu bumi. Gitu. Nah, jadi kalau kita mau memperbaikinya, uh, kita harus mengurangi uh, karbon hmm. dalam kehidupan kita agar tercapai kondisi namanya net zero, ya nol bersih. Gitu. Nah, ini 
uh, yang harus kita capai dan ha harus dicapai seluruh bangsa-bangsa uh, dunia. Ya. Uh, kalau bisa tercapai hal tersebut, maka insya Allah uh, kenaikan suhu bumi bisa terjaga pada sebatas satu setengah derajat Celcius. Gitu. What is net zero emissions? Uh, does that mean we have to produce zero emissions? But let me start by saying that greenhouse gases are both man-made or uh, made by you and me, produced by you and me, and it's also natural. Well, of course, in an ideal world, we would stop producing any emissions, but that's also not practical because when, even when we breathe or when we make small fire, we already produce emissions. But luckily, there is a circuit in nature that nature also absorbs uh, carbon dioxide, like plants, for instance, need carbon dioxide in order to, to live and to, to do their kind of breathing. And uh, forests do that to a pretty high degree. So if on the one hand we do our best to reduce emissions and at the same time do reforestation, uh, enhance peatlands, uh, conserve mangrove forests, then we can create a balance where yes, we still produce some unavoidable uh, emissions, but we also make it easier for the planet to absorb it again. Jadi, emisi nol bersih itu berarti emisi yang kita produksi tidak melebihi em emisi yang kita serap. Mm -hmm. uh, dan idealnya sama. Jadi yang kita keluarkan sama yang kita serapkan itu sama. Bahkan ada orang yang bilang lebih baik negatif. Jadi emisi yang kita keluarkan lebih sedikit, lebih kecil daripada emisi yang kita serap gitu. Think of it as setting a scale, producing greenhouse gas emission tips in that scales and we want to get those scales back into balance. You understand? But for that you need the right production which means that no more than greenhouse gas can be added into the atmosphere. Otherwise it tips, right? Is there a certain date or a deadline when we have to do all of this? According to the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, this would have to be by the middle of the century. So in 2050 at the very latest and on a global scale. So for every country. I will tell you something very sad right now and that is it should have been done already because we are right now destroying the planet but it is like it is and as I said we can do something about it yes I agree with you 2050 is too far away anyway uh, I, don't, I don't know what the world will look like in 2015 and I probably have three children by that time mm. Yes, it is too far away, uh, but we have a time limit before that as well. According to, remember the panel I mentioned to you, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate, climate change, change, the IPCC. Yes, IPCC. Uh, they have set a target that we must half the emissions by 2030. And their report they just recently produced say that we can only limit the warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius if we do that and if we then halving the emissions um, uh, again after 2030 before 2040. And this is of course a very challenging effort that we have to do but we have to work together as I talked about before and help each other. Is the world doing good enough in fighting climate change? The short, short answer to your question is no. We are not doing enough and we are starting too late. But as I said, we can still do something about it. Well, I think it's, it's definitely in the stage because we are seeing already the first effects. But are we doing enough? I'm not sure because I see a bit of an effect of everybody waiting for everybody else. As I said, this change can be difficult and expensive, so 
many people say, oh, let these people start first and then maybe we join. But I think everybody really has to join now. And every single country has to do what it can to reach this goal. What would happen if we fail to stop climate change? Well, it's difficult to predict in very detailed terms, but I think all the scientists agree that if we do nothing and everything goes on as before, we will see huge and very bad changes. What is my generation's role in this crisis and how could I contribute? Let me start by saying that, first of all, I feel a strong obligation to make sure that we, the, the older generation right now, are doing the best we can in order to stop climate change as much as we can. I do not want to leave this changing climate over to the next generation or the young generation. That must be the mission of my generation. But the young generation and the young people are not just victims of the climate change. You, are also, you should also be vocal. You should raise your voices, let your voices be heard. And my generation and the, and the governments should listen to you. I think we should be careful not to divide the work between the generations. We are all in this together. But I think it's not one generation does this, one generation does that. We have to do this together, and we have to do it now. Bapa ada nasihat nggak untuk anak muda kayak aku mengenai masa depan Indonesia? Jadi gini, untuk generasi 1945 ya yang membentuk atau melahirkan Republik Indonesia itu, kalau mereka ngelihat Indonesia ke depan itu konsepnya mengenai keadilan, ya kan, perdamaian, kesejahteraan, kemerdekaan gitu. Waktu itu nggak nggak kepikir itu hmm. bahwa Uh, yang juga penting itu adalah uh, dunia yang rendah emisi atau nol bersih ini hmm. karena belum isu itu belum ada dulu gitu ya. Nah ini isu untuk generasi anak muda sekarang. Jadi kalau anak muda sekarang mau mikir dunia ke depan itu seperti apa dunia mereka tentu harus ada kemerdekaan ya hmm. kebebasan harus ada demokrasi harus ada kesejahteraan keadilan semua itu tetap ada. Tapi sekarang harus ada plus satunya, yaitu uh, dunia yang uh, hijau dalam arti uh, uh, aman uh, secara iklim, uh, dunia nyaman secara iklim, dunia satu setengah derajat itu. Uh, karena kalau dunia nanti di masa depannya Samuel ini jadi 4 derajat Celcius, uh, kesejahteraan, keadilan, kenyamanan, kebebasan semua itu akan terganggu. bahkan bisa rusak hmm. ya karena dunianya udah jadi apa dinamakan dunia serasa neraka gitu. Jadi untuk masa depan Samuel yang yang beda dari generasi sebelumnya adalah faktor itu plus uh, bersih emisi itu uh, nol uh, emisi nol bersih itu. Hmm. Itu yang membedakan generasi anda dari generasi saya atau generasi uh, 45 dulu ya. ya. You are the dancing queen. Young and sweet, only seventeen. It's too high. Dancing queen, feel the beat from the tambourine. Oh yeah. <laughs> you can dance, you can join, having the time of your life. Ooh, ooh, ooh see that girl, watch that scene, digging the dancing. That was very good. It was like a good singer.